All right, everybody. I believe I'm live. Let's uh, get a few things worked out here, and then I'll be ready to go. We're going to be doing a review of a Cold Steel Gentleman's Stockman today, and uh, just get started in here in a few minutes. Alright guys, let's get going here. I uh, apologize for the late start. A little bit of a confusion on my part on what time the start of it was. Uh, try to schedule it for 3 or excuse me, three o'clock Eastern Time. And I'm on Central Time and I totally blew it because I was thinking 3 o'clock Central. So, apologies there. Uh, Benchmade was getting pretty pissed off and uh, <laughs> he had every right to be and I'm trying to figure out why. And then I look at the clock and I go, oh, Eastern time. So, totally my fault. Apologies. And uh, now we're ready to go. Um, I guess it made it a little harder for you guys in the UK to stay up even later, but my, I, I apologize. But we're going to be looking at a cold steel knife today. And it's a sow belly stockman. And I wanted to first start out by talking about the packaging. And uh, so you have this hang tag, and it says Gentleman Stockman. It's three blades, traditional styling, multi purpose, etc., etc., everyday carry. Here's a picture of it on the back, which actually doesn't match the handle material that we're going to be looking at. They make three different ones. Well, actually, they make two so far and they've got one coming out that has one with the yellow bone handle you see this one here with the r red jig bone or amber I guess it's red jig bone or amber jig bone brown jig bone uh, brown jig bone is probably the better description uh, it comes with three blades obviously it's a sow belly stockman and you have the 8CR13 mob steel and a two and a third inch clip point blade, a one and two third inch sheep's foot, and a one and three quarter inch spade blade. Uh, the metal is mirror polished, and you have nickel. That's spelled wrong. Last I checked, nickel was not spelled like that, unless you're talking about the, the coin. Uh, not even, yeah, I don't know. Anyway. Maybe even the coin's not spelled that way. Anyway, <clears throat> the metal is N-I-C-K-E-L. And you have easy carry of 3 and 17, 7 ten inch, 7 tenths of an inch closed. Kind of odd because uh, we don't really measure in tenths of an inch. That's more a metric thing. We measure in sixteenths, so that's kind of strange. So just a few little oddities. Uh... Cold Steel out of Grand Prairie, which is pretty nearby. Uh, I don't live too far away from there. And there's your model number, CS-FL-GSTKM-J. So, just some kind of insight on where they're at with this. Now, I want to say I hate this packaging. Uh, it's super tight to where the knife is, so trying to get it out of there without scratching it up was a heck of a challenge. So cold still if you're watching, man, you gotta make your bubble a little bigger on around the surround and maybe put like an insert in there to keep it in place. Cause um, I really had to spend like 10 minutes just to make sure I didn't scratch the knife. Anyway, enough about that. Let's look at the knife itself. 
First thing you're going to notice is it's three and three quarter inch, which that's how I measured it. They call it three and seven tenths. Okay, whatever. Um, again, that brown jig bone handle. Um, I'll just ask, does that not look familiar to you, that jigging? I'm going to have to say this was probably made in the same plant, same manufacturing facility, or at least there's some coincidence in the tooling here because that looks exactly like a Rough Rider handle. I've seen enough Rough Rider jig bone to to know what it looks like and that is pretty much identical to it. Um, also the bolsters look very much like uh, some of the older style bolsters of knives uh, from say five to ten years ago that Rough Riders made and nickel silver, nickel silver pins, right? And do we get brass liners? Nope, we do not. There's a difference. Uh, I think, uh, you know, it could be said that using brass liners now is kind of more the old-fashioned style way of doing things. And maybe now the more modern technique is to use stainless because I'm seeing more and more of it it seems like not that I care really because uh, you know stainless is probably a little a little more durable right hold up better over time and uh, you're not going to get that tarnish that you would with the brass but not that you really see it on the bottom but on the interior you get a little more uh, corrosion on the inside but I think I want to say the reason they used brass liners was to kind of better form the action because it sort of, when you open the blades, creates a uh, sort of a pattern on the interior of the brass liner that when now when you open it, then it kind of stays that way. But I don't really see any problem with the open on these. They're very snappy. And if you look at that pull, that again looks pretty similar to another knife manufacturer that we all know and love. And uh, there's no half stops on these. So it's much like the older style Rough Riders that did not have the half stops. Of course with the sow belly on most of those they didn't have them anyway. But uh, yeah, there's your main blade, your clip blade. This is uh, exactly, I'd say about two and five eighths inch length. And then you got the cutting edge there, two and three quarters. So this is going to be a UK legal knife. You guys over there in the UK. I don't know if they carry cold steel. Maybe somebody in the chat would know uh, if Heidi Haynes carries cold steel knives. Anybody know for sure? Maybe know. Let me know in the chat here if you happen to know. Um, and we'll take a look at the middle blade here. This is your sheep's foot, and you get that nice broad design, which is pretty familiar to anyone who's held a uh, sow belly stockman. This one measures uh, right about two inches long total length. You get about a one and three quarter inch cutting edge. And again, good look at the match strike pull on that. And you can see they did a grind, pretty snazzy grind on that one. That one's got uh, Pretty straight edge. Only little mistake I see is it's just a smidgen less of a cutting edge on that interior part. Kind of lessens as you go up. So could be a little better done there on that side. But that side looks a lot better, more straight. But you won't see any tang stamps on these. 
uh, on that main blade. I must failed to mention that earlier, but you've got on the front side this cold steel blade etch, right? And if you look at the marking on here, you've got the 8CR 13 mob there and China below it. So you could look at the blade edge on this one. It's not too bad. It's, again, it's not perfect. But yeah. Looks very much like a, a Rough Rider would look. Now these run uh, right at $30 at Knife Center. $29.99 before shipping and tax. And again, you get the three handle material choices. This one, you get a yellow bone, which is very much like a banana yellow. It's a bright yellow, according to photos, anyway. And then they're coming out with a blue smooth bone as well. And none of them have shields, which is kind of nice. They have just all material, right? And the only branding, again, is on that main blade. But, uh, that etch there that I could probably live without but at least they didn't take up a whole lot of real estate with it it's pretty understated I suppose compared to some knives but yeah you get a real nice edge on it they uh, let's take a look at your last and final blade and your spade blade here same shape pretty much as a Rough Rider. Matter of fact, I'll probably run and go get one just to make a better comparison. But <clears throat> the the blade edge on that one seems to be a little more even across as well on both sides. So I'd say this uh, of all three blades, this one was probably ground the best. But, uh, yeah, pretty consistent across. You got really good action there, but again, I would probably recommend if you don't want to scratch any of the blades with the push rub to remove that center blade first before you attempt to open either the outside blades because you'll probably scratch it. So, there is the cold steel. Now, again, they kind of a look at the gapping there I mean it's pretty minimal if anything so you're getting the build quality uh, probably about as top notch as a Rough Rider gets if you're happy I mean if you're lucky enough to get one that's you know pretty, is built as well as this you're doing pretty good so I'd say the build quality is yeah, as good as a Rough Rider if not better and again you get those nice plain bolsters which I think a lot of us really appreciate. Uh, no, don't need a whole lot of fancy schmancy going on with our bolsters. So you just got a single thread on either side there. And uh, looks real nice. So I'm pretty happy with the knife overall. Um, again, the only thing I really don't like is the, is the, bl uh, the little advertising they put on the blade there it's not major but I know who I could bought the knife you know the packaging had it on there I don't need to be told <laughs> what brand it is but there you have that let me have a, a moment to go get the uh, other sow belly and we'll make a comparison with some of the Rough Riders Okay, so here is a knife that uh, I'll be reviewing, I guess right now as well, um, might as well while I've got it out. But this is an older Rough Rider, and uh, this kind of would fit in that time frame of 
like the design of this particular uh, cold steel here. Now you've got some different bolsters and these are really fancy. So maybe this isn't the greatest comparison, but you can see, uh, you know, it's the same frame shape. And on this one you've got some nice inlay. I'm not even sure what green's probably just some kind of green synthetic there. And then you get this, you know, abalone in the middle here. But this is kind of a fancy schmancy one. And this is uh, one of their premium select models. And uh, this one took me like 10 months of searching to find it. It's the only one I've seen on eBay in uh, easily in 10 months. So um, I picked it up, and uh, but uh, we'll we'll compare the blade shapes. Let me get the sheep's foot over there and the spade blade over here. And I just about cut myself. And there's your three blades. Now I think the first thing I noticed was the clip point blade it seemed to be a little different in shape. So we'll look at that first, just to compare. Let's make sure we got it lined up the same. Here we go. So looking pretty similar so far, right? Yep, I guess they are about the same. Mm. Just very, very similar. Compare those blades. Compare those blades. And compare those blades. They all look pretty similar to me. So yeah, I think uh, I think Cold Steel is using the same plant to produce that knife, which is fine with me. If you're gonna do this good a job on a sow belly, you're gonna make Thrifty Kniffy pretty happy, because obviously this is one of my favorite patterns and if they're doing a good job making the sow belly whereas uh, with Rough Rider you know their last release of it was that wasp sow belly which was fine but you know obviously I would rather had some natural handle material and if you <laughs> make handle <clears throat> you know natural handled material sow bellies you're gonna get my attention pretty quick so between those two knives I think we have uh, some winners there when the with the sow belly pattern. But uh, I'll just kind of go over chat and we'll look at some questions. Anything you more you want to see about the knives? Uh, go into more detail about this one here. This is um, this is model number. Let's see if we can read it right off the knife. Oh yeah. It's on here. This is model number RR988. For anybody who's following along with the collection. Um, again, I'm kind of narrowing down how many I have left to obtain. And uh, there's probably only about half a dozen more to try to get a hold of. But let me go over to the chat here and see what you guys are talking about. I'll just go back a little bit here and I'll start from the beginning. I uh, just want to welcome Dion into the channel and say hello. Say hello to Robbie and uh, thank Benchmade for coming in. Sorry that we were started late there, Benchmade. My apologies. Um, Jose, hello. How are you doing? Good to see you in here. Feline Blind, good to know you're in here. Uh, Saw your recent messages, and um, I'm glad you found the channel. Jeffrey, uh, how are you doing? Zathras, good to see you. And, of course, hello, Gadget, how are you doing? We're all wishing you well over there in the UK. Um, sorry you had to wait any longer than you did. Now it's getting late. JMG, nice to see you in here. Uh, 
Byron, good to see you in here. Channel member, uh, all the Commando Club members. Um, it's always nice to see you guys in here. And uh, you know, if you're interested in joining up, just two dollars ninety nine cents a month, and uh, get some perks and some sneak peeks and some early previews of things. If you want to join, we got. Uh, Presta Ridge saying Rough Rider. Yeah, it sure looks like a Rough Rider, doesn't it? Can't be a Rough Rider, no big R on them. Ah, that's true. And uh, kind of getting away from that, hopefully. It's Athras, so hopefully that's the uh, last of the RT bolsters that we'll have to see. The price of the knife, again, is $30 if you didn't catch that. Gizmo, you're fine. I was late, so you're not late. I'm late. Uh, Sammy, good to see you all the way from uh, across the Atlantic. Good that I caught you. I'm glad you got uh, to see me live. JMG. It's a good looking knife. And says uh, Byron saying that this is the Chinese holding company's contracted factory to manufacture these uh, cold steel knives as part of buyout restructure. Okay, interesting information. It does have good snap on it. It's uh, you know, I'd say probably. Right in that six seven range that you like to see. It does have a good sound to it, doesn't it? Let's listen to that again. There we go. And uh yeah, I'd say it's well made. Back springs don't have any Oh, this one here. Yeah, I'm not trying to show off. Man, I waited a long time to get a hold of this piece. It's um yeah, they're just you just don't see people letting go of them. Um, it's really a track to piece. I mean, it's over the top fancy, right? It's not. It's not something I'd want to carry every day. I'd be worried that I'd mess up the scales. But uh, yeah, this is like a Sunday carry, special day carry. It's not one you pull out every day. But look at that gleam. It just shines, doesn't it? way that light catches it it's just it's just super fancy it's almost too much but uh, yeah it's nice and then uh, you'd rather have a black SAK climber at $30 well they're nice knives uh, I just you know I've seen enough of their red scales to last me a lifetime. No, but you can't go wrong with the sack. You're right. They're very dependable and very well made. There's nothing at all wrong with them. I just think from a traditional sense that I would like to see more than like a natural handle material. Alright, so I think I'm all caught up with cat, uh, chat. Um, I want to mar welcome Arlen Payne in, Cone in, and uh, anyone else I may have missed. Are we still good here, Benchmate? Everything going well? I haven't seen it uh, chat in a minute. So, anyway, just take a closer look at the bolsters on this one. They've got the sort of the little etched diamond here on the end as a pinch and then a double thread and a double thread just super fancy can you see those inlays in there if I hold that steel well enough and you got the uh, nice little inserts there spacers little stainless inserts just really fancy well made knife And I'm sure these were probably a little bit of a premium in price when they first came out. I'm not exactly sure the exact price, but you know these are long discontinued, and there'd be 
you'll be very lucky to find one. So. Yeah, I'm a much bigger fan of the black a -Logs too. And if you haven't already seen the uh, previous um, live review I did, talked a lot about the black a -Logs, Swiss Army knives. Again, this is the Cold Steel Gentleman's Stockman we're looking at today. And uh, it's a sow belly pattern. And the three blade. And good look at that clip point blade again. Nice snap on it. Kind of compare it to this one. Let's pull out that middle blade. Did you get uh, probably even better snap than this one? It's a good spring on it. And you see the difference here. You get the brass brass liners on this one, but even still, no gaps really on this one either. They're both well made knives. Pretty happy with both of them. But you guys ain't got any questions, we're just going to hang out for a bit. Uh, again, the, uh, the packaging for the cold steel. And I just wish they would improve on that a little bit. Um, you can see how tight that is inside there. If I put that in there, you can see just how much room you have to try to cut around it there's not much and uh, I had to really take my time so it's definitely not frustration free packaging mm -hmm. the, uh, the effort required was a bit much <clears throat> you like the abalone yeah pretty nice isn't it Mattisfaction welcome to the channel so let's just zoom in here a little bit let's take a peek closer peek but that's really about all I got for you guys today just want to kind of chill and hang and get the conversation going here uh, one of the things that I uh, wanted to talk about a little bit was that uh, we've got a lot of Uncle Henry knives coming up uh, to review and uh, so there may be sort of a, a run on those in terms of reviews coming up um, finally starting to get caught up a little bit with that and uh, but I've got other things right now kind of taking up a lot of my time so it's uh, been hard to, to get up videos but um, we're gonna have a big uh, Uncle Henry sh show next week and if I can remember to be on time it will start at 3 p.m. Eastern time next week when we do uh, another thrifty Thursday but uh, again this knife was $29.99 you can get it at Knife Center right now it's an optional three options for the handle material I think that they have the yellow smooth bone in stock as we speak and then they uh, are going to be having shortly coming soon you can pre-order it right now blue smooth bone handle as well so I might be looking at those as well um, it's going to depend on what that blue smooth bone looks like but uh, we yeah we got a lot of the Uncle Henry knives coming up to take a peek at we got some uh, fixed blades as well as uh, folding knives so kind of a wide range of Uncle Henry's to take a peek at and hello Jesse welcome back appreciate you coming in here But I guess since uh, not a lot of activity going on in the chat, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Unless there's any other questions, just want to thank everybody for coming in today, and apologize again for being late on the late start. And 
just try to do a better job next time. We, uh, we've got all the software issues ironed out now. Uh, it just takes a little time to get set up to get going, but uh, otherwise we're uh, going to be pretty consistent, I think, from this point forward to uh, go live without itchy. It's just a matter of me getting my head straight. But that's going to do it for today's review. I hope you guys have a great evening, a great afternoon. And we're going to see you guys next Thursday again, 3 o'clock, for Thrifty Thursday. Thank you again, Benchmade, for moderating, for everyone coming in. Uh, Rab Abadu, I didn't get a chance to say hello to you, so Rab, hello, how are you doing? Manisfaction. And, uh, you guys have a great day. Take care.